and then after the shango, it came the whole, the whole karate. Yeah, right. The whole yeah. And then after the shango, it came the whole. So we've got onions, which is about 50 kg here. Yep. We've got plum tomatoes, tomato puree, fresh tomatoes, yep. uh, garlic and ginger, yep. mostly garlic rather than ginger. Yep. Uh, and then we've got our own uh, spices. We've got paprika in there, turmeric, chili powder, salt. Salt. Um, and then you've got the garam masalas, which are whole spices, not powdered down. Yep. Uh, because we are going to blend it, blend it, you know. Okay. And do you so blend the in those into the sauce? Yeah, 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 yeah. They're cooked in okay. with the onions as well. Yeah. Okay. So you've got uh, cinnamon sticks in there. You've got cloves. You've got green cardamoms, uh, black right. cardamoms. So uh, you actually blend the whole spices together. Blend the whole spices. Right. Let them okay. cook down in, with the sauce. Fantastic. And then they're just going to be blended down. Very interesting. Now okay, the thing so is, you probably see a film of oil on on our base sauce now, but it's nothing to worry about because we're cooking in bowl teas. Yep. Um, and the thing is with the bolt teeth, it burns off a lot of the excess oil, yep. number one. And secondly, if there is any oil left, we can always spoon it off. It's no big story at all. Um, in comparison to sort of Bangladeshi restaurants, if you like, mm -hmm. uh, and compared to a bolt restaurant, we need to have oil in our base sauce because if we don't, it will burn in the bolted dish yes. because it's on high flame. You know, yep. carbon steel is it's going to burn. It helps lubricate the cooking yeah, under the high heat. That's right, yeah. That's great. So, uh, Andy Munro, you're incredibly experienced in the world of Balti, and you've you've known it from the very start. Tell us a bit about the numbers of Balti houses that were at the beginning and how it evolved. Well, Balti first started in this area in the night, well, mid late 1970s, and, and really hit the heights, if you like, in the 19 late 1980s, early 1990s. At this stage, in this area alone, there were probably between 20 and 30 Balti houses. It was a, people used to say, instead of asking about the weather as British people do, it was, what's your favorite Balti house? It was that popular at the time. Then, I think suddenly every Indian restaurant, by Indian I mean Bangladeshi, etc., decided Balti was the thing to have on their menu. So yep. suddenly you could get a Balti anywhere, but it wasn't a real Balti. And that was a tragedy really. And I suppose at the same time, there were concerns with what happened over in America, um, and terrorism and all that sort of thing. People started to be a bit wary about coming to this area, thinking, well, if I can go and get one locally, although it wasn't a proper Balti, yeah. then uh, why bother to go all the way to the Balti Triangle? I think that's what unfortunately affected the area. And, you know, we've probably got in the Balti Triangle yeah. only probably about four or five restaurants left, although I like to call it the Balti Quadrangle now because it's <laughs> right. moved out some genuine Balti houses have moved a bit further out in Birmingham to the Sturchley, Sully Oak area. Right. So it's a slightly wider in terms of the, the true Balti houses. Thoroughly enjoyed the Baltis we've cooked and, and eaten today. It's Shabab's uh, Balti house. It's been here for many, many years, hasn't it? And the, the chef is actually quite young. He's taken it over about, what, seven years ago or something? I, yeah, I mean, what I'd say just, to, you know, it's an interesting point that you made, but what I'd also say about the Balti houses if you go into Balti House now, like this one, Shabab's, probably 40% of the custom are Asian. Oh, okay? that's interesting. Uh, whereas when Balti first hit the scene, for want of a better word, in the, yeah. you know, when it's at its height of popularity in the 80, late 80s, early 90s, in fact, it was mainly a white custom, 90% a white custom. That's changed a bit, which I'm pleased, you know, and, that, uh, uh, and that's a good thing. Yeah, that's excellent. Um, thank you very much for your, your input on that. Absolutely magic. Right, so the tandoori chef here is going to make a cook a naan. I'm just slapping it in. That's a, that's a very big yeah. tandoor oven, and they make huge size ones, table size naans here as well. That's right, yeah. The one like you made Absolutely. the other night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we can see that with the difference. 30 there. seconds. Yeah, and that's a standard plain naan. No problem at all. I'll do that for you. No problem at all. It's very, very hot. Yeah, yeah. no worries. <laughs> How long, how long does your tandoor oven take to heat up? Uh, uh, well, 
if it's been off all night, yeah. um, in the first thing in the morning, it takes us about 40 minutes. 40 minutes. Um, but once it's there, it's fine. I mean, even if we don't have a, or any orders for an hour or so, for yeah. example, then we just, because we leave it on like a pilot light, yeah. almost. Um, but if we've had no orders for an hour, say, for example, yeah. um, then it takes literally four minutes to heat back up again. I see, that's good. You know, but once that's it's good. busy, when, when the motions are running, yeah. It'll never go cold, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I know. Uh, I know it'll be mean. perfectly fine, not a problem at all. Really brilliant. It's I'll just that what we tend to do is, where he's put the non on now, yeah. our next non wouldn't go in the same place. It would rotate. Right. Because that, where, where he's put it on now, that will be cooler. There we go. Taking that out now. Doesn't that look good? And that's your plain naan. That's a plain naan, yeah. And some butter on top. Is that butter ghee? Or butter just plain yeah. butter? Butter, butter ghee. There Marvelous. we are, fantastic. Lovely. Done. I'm going to have a taste of that maybe later. That's, that's no worries. very, very tempting. Thank you very much, Tandoor yeah. Chef. Thank you. Sorry, Andy, tell me about the, uh, the bowl. So just a little thing about this. This is 99% exactly the same as the very first bowl to roll made in 1975. Wow. The thing about this, the thing that differentiates it from a wok is as follows. It's made of thin pressed steel, so it heats up very quickly, as you'll see in cookery demonstrations. Yeah. And the other difference is the handles are quite flat, whereas a wok handles will go up high like that. Yeah. And it's also, apart from having a flat bottom, Yeah. It's a got a slightly um, squat shape for yep. stability on the stone. Yeah. So just to recap, flat handles, thin pressed carbon steel, yep. flat bottom base, and a fairly flat sort of profile to give yep. stability on uh, I stone. See. What would you say the most important element of it? I presume is it the thinness of the, the well, steel? Well, yes. I mean, the, the thinness is absolutely critical secret because bolters are fast cooked. Yep. Uh, so that's absolutely critical. Um, the flat base also is critical because obviously stability. Yep. The things that add to the stability, which are preferable, but yep. not critical, are the flat handles yep. and also the fact that it's a slightly squat shape. And that yep. gives you absolute stability on the stone. Perfect. And the fact it's made of steel, pressed steel, carbon steel, is a very good conductor well, of heat. The other thing I'd say about it, because it's made of thin pressed steel, it's not a stainless steel. Yeah. Uh, some people say that's carcinogenic anyway, but because it's the way it is, yeah. it builds up layers of flavour. So the more voltage you cook in it, yeah. if you just wash it in lukewarm water and don't scour it to bits, yeah. okay, you get layers of flavour. Yeah. The more you use it, the more flavoursome it is, and it's non and it becomes naturally non-stick. And of course you season it, so when you start cooking with it, you, you know, when you cook a few times of it, of course it will turn a dark, much darker mm. colour like the one turn black, like yeah. the one in this, and that's perfectly normal. So when you finish cooking with them, you kind of just wipe it clean, make sure you don't have any excess water or anything that could rust it, and you'll have it for a yeah, lifetime. It, it's, it's lukewarm water yeah, basically, yeah. and yeah. then treat it with a little bit of veg oil, yeah. and then, you know, it's, that's really the way to do perfect. it. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. Well, thank you very much Andy. I believe you've got a funny anecdote to uh, share with us. Yes, um, Richard. So I used to do this Central Street Baltic Guide, sponsored by the local paper. And my claim to fame was it was a bestseller on Christmas in Waterstones, only because it was a quid a time, by the way. <laughs> the third edition, the Birmingham Mail decided they wanted to get sponsorship. So they asked Sharwoods to sponsor the book, which is a bit of sacrilege in, in reflection. Yeah. That's another story. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so we... Um, they asked me to do a, um, a demonstration at the Birmingham Food Show. Oh, wow. um, so I'm not really a chef, obviously. So, that, so I, I was behind the counter and I shouted out, who would like a bowl tea? So lots of hands went up because it's very, very popular, obviously. And so I said, what would you like in it? And somebody said, I'll have a prawn bowl tea, please. Yeah. Now prawns are a bit watery and I sort of forgot myself not being a proper chef threw the prawns into a boiling oil, some boiling oil and it went up like a bloody flamethrower. Yeah. So that's the first thing, I uh, managed to get the fire down, but on that uh, food show, Maddie Jaffrey was oh. also had um, an exhibition or a stall, I think of some sort. Anyway, she came striding past um, my, my Balti uh, stand 
and sniffed at um, the bowl tea and said, there's not such a thing as a bowl tea. It's not a unique dish. It's not an original dish. Um, and I, I tried to explain to her that cookery was always a form of development and the fact it was only developed in the 1970s doesn't make it any less pucker. But anyway, she sort of almost stormed off really? yeah, with her nose in the air. Oh. And yet, two, I think it was a year later, might have been two years later, I was going into a shop and what should I aspire but the Madhu Jaffrey Balti set. So I rest my case on that. So two years before, there wasn't such a thing. So there you go. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you very much, Andy. <laughs>